Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner. Before we begin tonight's program, we want to take a moment to acknowledge the loss of four members of the beef community in a tragic plane crash here in Nashville. Our deepest sympathies, together with our thoughts and prayers, go out to the Mole family and the beef cattle community during this difficult time. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're live from the 2014 NCBA trade show in Nashville, Tennessee, where more than 300 exhibitors and thousands of cattlemen are gathered. Join us for all the fun of opening night. And now, your host, Kevin Oxner, live from Nashville, Tennessee. Hello and welcome to this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us as we bring you all the sights and sounds of the 2014 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show right here in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This event has been more than a year in the making and we've got a big crowd here tonight as the doors of the NCBA Trade Show opened for the first time just about an hour ago. Now the scale of this trade show is simply amazing. It's the largest cattle industry trade show and it includes 300 exhibitors covering nearly six acres. And helping me bring you the stories from out on the convention floor tonight are two skilled reporters, both well versed in the cattle world and good friends of mine. Russell Nemitz is with us to help us bring us the trade show directly into your living room. Russell, are you ready to roll tonight? Oh man, Kevin, I am glad to be back in Nashville, Tennessee and working the NCBA trade show with you and of course our good friend Marvin Kokash. It's an exciting time for the U.S. beef cattle industry and we're going to have an exciting couple hours from the NCBA trade show and of course the cattle industry convention here in Music City. Russell, thanks for making the trip from Big Sky Country. We'll be checking in with you just a little bit later. And our other floor reporter is none other than the only Marvin Kokash. Marvin. You've been to the NCBA trade show a time or two before, haven't you? Oh, absolutely, Kevin. And this trade show is rocking. If you're not here, you're missing something. Folks, there is so much excitement, so much energy, just food, fun, fellowship. We got it going on tonight, and I'm so excited to share all this with you. We're looking forward to seeing uh, what and who you find to visit with tonight, Marvin. Well, I'm, I'm excited to share a few, uh, maybe a little crazy things with you, Kevin. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. And joining me now is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, Forrest Roberts. Forrest, we're expecting potentially another record-breaking crowd here. What would you attribute to the momentum that we feel at this convention? Well, no doubt, Kevin, we're off to a great start here in Nashville this evening. And I think a lot of the momentum comes back to the point you just made. There's a whole lot of planning that comes into what folks see here in Nashville this week. But certainly, you know, we're, we're living in some uncharted waters. We're selling in some uncharted waters in this industry right now with beef prices, cattle prices at all-time record highs. And we certainly think that's going to be a direct reflection of an all-time record-setting attendance here in Nashville this week. But I truly believe that folks are here in Nashville this week because they see not the challenge, but really the opportunity within our industry. Our industry is no doubt at a crossroads. And when we look at the opportunities around how we address topics like how technologies are used in our industry to the agendas of some activist organizations, all the way through to how government policy is set not only in Washington, D.C., but back home in state governments. And then last but not least, the momentum around how we see consumers and how their preference for beef is changing. It really, what I've talked to with folks here in the last 24 to 48 hours has been, they have a sense of optimism about the future of this industry. That's why they're here, and that's the momentum that I certainly feel here tonight in Nashville. Now, NCBA is uh, very much a policy organization, and as you talk to folks here at the convention, what are some of the policy issues that are top of mind at Capitol from all across the country? Well, NCBA is an organization that tries to do everything we can to connect the beef supply chain really on a global basis. And when we look at the feedback I've received thus far from producers around the country is they want to talk about the Farm Bill, they want to talk about international market access and expansion of that, and then around sustainability is a topic to, to better get an understanding of how we define it. 
And as you well know, the, the Farm Bill was a big area of focus for NCBA in the past several years, especially the past several weeks. We certainly believe there were some significant wins with the Farm Bill that was passed relative to a research title. When we look at conservation programs that were maintained and, and certainly disaster assistance that's well needed in this industry in certain points in time, we certainly think those were huge wins relative to the Farm Bill outcomes. No doubt there's still a whole lot of work to be done on one major issue, and that is none other than country of origin labeling, a law that is in place now today that we feel ultimately will take economic opportunity away from beef producers as that law is structured today. And our job is to continue to work with members of Congress as we move forward to get that law to a position where it really makes good economic sense for our industry, especially here in not only the USA, but North America. One last quick question. Um, what would you say to cattlemen and cattlewomen about convention and about why they should be here? You know, this is an opportunity to engage with the fastest growing, largest national organization, Kevin, not just here in the USA, but in the world. And we feel like as an organization with the double digit growth we've had in membership over the past year, it's an organization that has a lot of momentum. You can sense that and feel that in the air here tonight. And we think that the folks that are able to engage here with us and also those that are back home, they can engage in the process in a way that can help us make the best business decisions for the future of this industry. Thank you very much, Forrest. We really appreciate your leadership and I look forward to seeing you more this week. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And now is a great time to become an NCBA member. It's easy to do, and there are a number of great reasons to become a member right now, including some outstanding member benefits and merchandise discounts available exclusively to NCBA members. Join now by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website that's beefusa.org. Now let's head out to Marvin Kokash on the trade show floor. Marvin, who have you found to interview? You know, there's so many great industry professionals here on the trade show, and I've found one of the finest. I'm here with Rod Newlick. He's a director of livestock marketing for Purina Animal Nutrition. Rod, there's a lot of exciting things going on at Purina. Tell us what's going on at the Purina Animal Nutrition Center. There's a lot of stuff going on, Marvin, at the uh, Purina Animal Nutrition Center. You know, when we were here at the show last year at Tampa, I was telling everyone that we were doubling down on our research um, investment at Purina Animal Nutrition Center, and that's what we've done in 2013. Uh, in 2013, we invested as much in that research unit as the book value of the research unit. So we've got a new beef unit with a conference center that we've, we've added. Uh, the horse unit built a new palatability unit and uh, research or um, exercise physiology unit. We've got a new swine we wean to finish unit, a new heifer uh, development unit. Just a lot of stuff going on. And then kind of the icing on the cake is we build a new conference center that will hold about 300 people so we can have producer education events. In fact, we had the first one at that brand new unit January 6th. Really cold there, but we had a cattle event, so it was only fitting at the research unit that cattle started that thing out with uh, about 150 producers from 28 states. So we're really excited about what's going on there. So, Rod, that sounds so exciting, so much innovation at Purina. So, really, what does this mean for the producers, that all, the, all of your new innovations there? Well, for the cattle unit, it's, it's a great uh, bonus for us. We about tripled our ability to do research on, on cattle. And, and the important thing for cattlemen, especially for our cow-calf guys, is how do I get more out of my forage resources? So what we've put together for the new cattle unit is, is uh, being able to measure forage intake and supplement intake on a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week basis and find out how we can get more out of that producer's resources, basically as grass or hay. So uh, we're, gonna, we're looking for a lot of great things coming out of that unit in the future. You know, I know you guys share a lot of uh, some of the newest research coming out of the research farm. And what, are, what is some of the latest research that you can share tonight with all the cattlemen? Well, one of the things that we're featuring here at the show is our new Accuration block. Uh, something that we've talked about a lot, and in fact, we've got a session uh, from our director of research tomorrow here at the show uh, about sustained nutrition, you know, caring for that cow. 365 days a year and making sure she's got the right nutrition. So at the show here, we're featuring our Accuration block, which helps producers to get that done. They can have it in front of the cows every day of the year, making sure that she's getting the right nutrition to make sure that calf is, is really healthy in the womb, which we're finding out is more and more important all the time. So it's really exciting stuff. No, no doubt. Kevin, uh, we'll kick it back to you right on the set. Very good. Well, thanks, Marvin and Rod, for that great nutritional insight. You know, we had a record-breaking attendance last time we were here in Nashville, and it looks like we just may set another record this time. Now, let's go back out to Russell Nemitz. Russell, what exhibit are you prepared to interview now? 
Well, I'll tell you what, I am standing by with a representative from Merck Animal Health. And as we said at the top of the program, it's an exciting time and a profitable time to be in the U.S. beef cattle industry. And with us now is Jim Miles, Senior Marketing Manager for Fed Cattle. And Jim, uh, thanks for stopping by. Let's talk about uh, your guys' Responsible Beef Initiative and why you guys started to, to launch this. About a year ago, we start, really started figuring out that people didn't know how to talk about their operations, their cattle operations. So we said, okay, how can we help people really find their voice so they can talk about what they do good uh, concerning either cattle, the environment, um, their communities, or their business? Now you talked about the program. When did you guys decide to launch this? Uh, we actually launched it last May with uh, about uh, four seminars in one week where we actually met and, and took cattle feeders through a program where they could learn to talk about their, their business. Well, it sounds like a very, very exciting program. Tell us about the four pillars of Responsible Beef. Well, we got four pillars, and really we start with cattle because really that's what we're all about in the cattle industry is how we care for our cattle, how we treat for them. If, if we don't treat them right, they don't treat us right. So really the cattle become the, the number one pillar. Now Jim, why and what do you hope that cattle feeders and nutritionists and vets will gain from the Responsible Beef Program? To find their voice, to be able to talk about those four pillars, which one is cattle, two is the land, because we all care for the land, three is, is the community, which really starts with family, and fourth is a business. So really find their voice to be able to talk about that. And before we let you go, now that we're in this digital age that cattlemen and cattle women are uh, embracing, how do we find out more? You can go to responsiblebeef.com and check out the website and read about all the stories that are on there. And here at the uh, NCBA this, this year, we're going to have a bunch of FFA students. For every one of these that we hand out on Thursday, we're going to donate $10 to the FFA. Hey, that's a great cause. Thanks for helping out our young people. You know it. Thank our you. All right, Jim Miles, Senior Marketing Specialist with Merck Animal Health. Of course, we're in their fed cattle division. Kevin, a lot going on at the Merck Animal Health booth, and we're going to check back in with some more of their specialists a little bit later in the program. Thanks, Russell, and thank you to the good folks at Merck. Now, remember, it's not too late to join us right here in Nashville. The NCBA trade show opened just tonight, and it's going to be open all day Wednesday and again on Thursday. So let me extend a personal invitation for you to come to Nashville and join us if at all possible. And joining us now is the man who's served the past year as president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Scott George, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Well, I'd just be interested to know as we kick off this great trade show in this convention, gather so many of your friends and, and NCBA members together, what are some initial thoughts? Well, I have mixed emotions, quite honestly. Uh, I'm thrilled with the attendance we're having, and I'm thrilled with the trade show we've got here. Record, record uh, exhibitors rec seem to be record attendance. Coming up and down, people are really engaged. I'm also feeling a little bit nostalgic because this is the, the end of my term. Indeed. Well, and we appreciate everything you've done. Now, why do you think it's so important for people to make it a point to get to this convention? Well, you know, our industry is evolving. We don't do, we don't do business the same way we've always done. We're not going to use the same equipment and tools. Uh, the issues change. This is a place where you can learn new ways to, to do business. You can interact with other people, uh, form associations, and also voice your opinion about the challenges that you're facing in your own operation and find a way that we can move together to further our industry and to further our own businesses. You've had quite a year, lots of miles, lots of hotel rooms, lots of airplane flights. <laughs> uh, what are some of the highlights and maybe successes that uh, you, you, you consider as you look back on this past year? Well, the highlights would have to be the visiting the states. Visiting the state associations and interacting with those members in their own home, home locale. That is so nice. We have such a great industry and people that are involved in this are, are such good people, literally. Uh, so that's the highlight. Some of the successes, I'm really thrilled that we've been able to move trade issues forward so well. Uh, we, we're getting more access in Japan. We've moved from 20 months to 30 months. We've seen implementation in South Korea and Panama and Colombia. And those exports are really continuing to add value to our producers, putting money in their pockets, helping them stay in business and to be profitable. Based on all the people you've met and the associations that uh, you've attended with annual conventions and so forth, why do you think it's so important for folks to be members of both the state and national uh, cattlemen's organization? I'm glad you put it that way, Kevin, because, you know, at the state level we do face issues. 
and our producers need to be heard and they need to have a united voice and they do that by joining their state association by the same token we have national issues that, that affect us and we have commonalities with other producers from other parts of the, of the country and, and we need a, a localized a common voice there as well and so that's why I think it's so important that you belong to both your state association and the national association it's literally a partnership a hand in hand going forward and it helps it helps you stay in business it helps you be prosperous I know you believe that from the bottom of your heart we appreciate all you've done as president of this organization Scott well thank you it's been a pleasure absolutely to join Scott and others, become a member of NCBA, and the nation's largest and oldest cattle industry organization. You can visit our website at beefusa.org or call 1-866-USA-BEEF. Coming up on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll have much more from this enormous NCBA trade show live from Nashville, Tennessee. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. And thanks so much for joining us for this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we come to you from Nashville, Tennessee and the enormous NCBA trade show. Let's go back out to the trade show floor. Marvin, what's happening where you're at now? You know, Kevin, I've had a chance to kind of walk around the trade show and I I've had a, just ran into one of our professionals at Dow AgriSciences. I've got Dave Owens, who's the director of the U.S. Portfolio for Range and Pasture Products. Dave, glad to have you here. Glad to have uh, Dow support Cattlemen to Cattlemen again. So uh, tell me, what are some of the factors that really uh, make forages, important to cattle, uh, forages so important to cattle producers in 2014 and beyond? Yeah, Marvin, I'll tell you what, we're uh, facing some unprecedented times. Uh, grain prices are just coming down a little bit after their all-time high, but that really helped to validate the importance of forages. Uh, they're still your lowest cost method of feeding your cattle. And, uh, you know, we're headed into a little bit of an expansion uh, uh, time slot here, so at least that's what everybody tells me. And uh, ranchers are only going to be able to expand as much as their forage base is going to allow them. So with an ever-shrinking number of forage acres available out there, we lost quite a few of them to uh, corn and soybeans this year, it's going to be absolutely critical that folks take great care of their forage bases. You know, I've always been told, you know, pounds is dollars to pounds of beef. So tell me, uh, how does uh, weed and brush control help put more pounds on those cattle? Well, the first really obvious thing is, is that it helps in productivity. Usually for every pound of weeds that you control, you grow another pound of grass. And when you're talking three, 4,000 pounds of weeds out there per acre, per acre, that's a whole lot of money uh, and a lot of forage coming back into your wallet. The other thing that's a little bit insidious about weeds and brush is that it tends to limit uh, where the cattle graze. So they tend to spot graze, they don't utilize all the forage uh, very efficiently, and uh, that can be wasteful as well, as well as set yourself up for uh, the possibility of overgrazing and some future problems. Absolutely. You know, Dow's got a tremendous portfolio of products. Some, what are some of the Dow AgriSciences products that really cattlemen should focus on? 
Well, you know, the first thing that you want to do, of course, is uh, match uh, one of our products to your particular problem. So getting out early in the spring and really uh, trying to identify what kind of weeds and brush you have uh, is critical. And then you can utilize uh, some of our uh, uh, fundamental type uh, products like a Graze On Next or Forefront uh, to really do a wonderful job on controlling a wide range of, of broadleaf weeds. And then uh, if you have some specialty problems or some really tough uh, uh, brush like blackberry and, and really ironweed and some of the other really uh, tough, uh, tough weeds, Chaparral is an absolutely outstanding option. And in fact, if you uh, combine the Chaparral with Pasture Guard, uh, it is the absolute lights out on blackberry. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal. We've got some test plots that are showing 100% control uh, a full two years after treatment, which is really kind of exciting. And then finally, we've got uh, Sendero, which is uh, the new standard in mesquite control. And uh, it's, uh, it's for our southwestern ranchers who have mesquite as a problem. Tremendous product, and we're, we're tickled to death. Uh, this will be our third year uh, after launch uh, this upcoming year. So we're excited about that. Dave, we want to uh, thank you and Dow AgroSciences for all your support. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, Marvin, and thank you, Dave. Joining me now is the chair of NCBA's policy division, Philip Ellis of Wyoming. Philip, welcome to the program. Thank you, Kevin. Glad to be here. Well, let's begin talking about NCBA policy and specifically some of the wins as you look back over 2013. You bet, Kevin. I'm glad to visit with you about our success. They're important to me and my family on the ranch in Wyoming. Uh, in the first part of the year, we pushed for and uh, Congress reauthorized the ADUFA, the Animal Drug User Fee Act, the author reauthorization signed by President in June. This uh, legislation, this reauthorization, important to the development of animal health products that are important for us on the ranch. Uh, we have had a success in expanding trade with Japan. Uh, you know, Kevin, in October, the government shut down for 16 days. But we pushed and our beef marketing chain, meat inspection went on and our chain did not shut down and, and that was very important to keep uh, everything flowing in the beef chain. Uh, we've worked with the, our partnership with Public Lands Council on some legislation that we're moving in Congress important to our Western ranchers, Grazing uh, Improvement Act, the Catastrophic Fire Act. Those are all successes and hard work we've been doing in Washington, D.C. And frankly, we, uh, we were leading and pushing in the Farm Bill for permanent disaster assistance, and it is in the Farm Bill. And I wanted to follow up on that Farm Bill question. Like so many other farmers and ranchers, I was anxious to get a Farm Bill passed, but frankly, we really didn't get what we wanted, did we? Tell folks your perspective on we that. We did not get what we wanted on, on two of our very high priorities. Uh, le uh, language on gypsa and uh, some help on the mandatory cool that is costing our industry dollars right now uh, that will cost us all up and down the beef marketing chain. Those were not in the final conference report and so we were unable because our priorities weren't addressed to support the final conference report. Uh, we will be working on that throughout this coming year to find uh, ways to address those important priorities. And it's not just election years where we're actively involved or years where there's farm bill passed. Tell folks why you think it's so important to have a continual presence in Washington, D.C. Uh, Kevin, uh, we engaged on the farm bill, uh, rewriting the farm bill three years ago with our team in Washington, our volunteer leaders. We've been working on that farm bill for three years virtually every day and I can't do that for my ranch in Wyoming. I need to have a team here in Washington DC and that is what we have in NCBA that can work on that farm bill from the beginning right up to uh, just the legislation this week as it went through Congress. So we need that to happen and regulation is going on every day. We need a team in Washington DC watching that. I can't be watching that from the ranch. Those are really important reasons why we have to have our presence in NCBA and why as a rancher I support our efforts and I'm glad to volunteer my time as leadership to have that team in DC. Couldn't agree with you more Philip. Thanks for coming tonight. You bet. Glad to be here. If you'd like to join Philip and other NCBA members in the fight to protect America's beef cattle industry, why not become an NCBA member? It's easy to do. Just visit the website beef 
www.usa.org or call 1-866-USA-BEEF. It's time now to kick it back out to Russell Nemitz and see what's happening on the trade show floor. Russell? Who do you have for us to visit with? Well, I have another industry supporter standing by, Dr. Kevin Hill, technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Welcome. Health. And Dr. Hill, profitability starts with a live calf and profitability continues in today's business with a healthy calf. Let's talk about PrimeVac program and what it's all about. PrimeVac is a program we're really excited about. It's uh, Merck's branded protocol health added value added programs for calves uh, the point of it is to show producers how they can use our products to get that maximum value out of the calves as they prepare them for, for sale moving off the ranch now explain to all those cattlemen and cattle women that are watching the program tonight how prime vac protocols add value to their calves well we know that health is one of the main indicators of how profitable a calf's going to be as it moves into the feeding stages. So preparing a calf's immune system so that he's got the best defenses possible as he moves through that phase is important. So that's one of the things we do. We, we communicate to buyers that this calf has been prepared. He's going to uh, perform in the feedlot and not cost that buyer a lot of money and expense in, in uh, terms of handling health problems. So what you're really saying, that calves that are properly vaccinated and dewormed will bring more money at sale time. Of course, all those cattlemen out there want to know how much more. Yeah, and that's a good question because when you sit in a sale ring, you really can't see that those calves that are advertised as vaccinated are bringing more money necessarily. But we've got a great database. We've got uh, over 20 years of data from superior uh, livestock auctions that tell us exactly what buyers are willing to pay for calves that have been properly prepared. And so they can be as much as 15 to $20 per head for a preconditioned calf and on up to as much as $60 per head for a calf that's been vaccinated and weaned. So it's a, it, those are big numbers. That is some real money right there, Dr. Hill. Now, are there any significant differences between PrimeVac and other value-added programs that might be out there on the market today? Yeah, there really are, and there are several other programs there. But what we've done is taken the basic requirements, which you'll find in all value-added programs of respiratory protection and clostridial protection, and then added to those um, uh, protection for, I guess, parasites, because that plays a part in preparing the immune system. And then also looking at adding weight to the calf, which adds revenue by using implant strategies. And so uh, we put that all together in, a, in an iPad uh, app that veterinarians can use, uh, and, and that's, that's working out real well. I see you brought the iPad app. Can we show it really quickly on television here? Yeah, it's called the Herd Health Manager, and it's just uh, an easy way for a veterinarian to sit down with his customer, um, show him how products fit into the year-long uh, Herd Health program, and uh, it's a, a nice educational tool, too, so the producer understands better what all these vaccines and expenses are really for. That's pretty cool. Thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Kevin, Dr. Kevin Hill, technical services vet for Merck Animal Health. With that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Thanks, Russell. I really appreciate all the tools and technology you're bringing us this evening. Now, let's check in with our other reporter, Marvin Kokash. Marvin, are you enjoying the trade show? Kevin, I've had a chance to walk around, and you know how much I love equipment. And I've got to go over and sit on some of the finest tractors, wind rowers, skid loaders, everything uh, over at the John Deere booth. And so I brought back over here Mr. Ryan Iverson. Ryan is a, a portfolio manager for John Deere, product manager for John Deere. Ryan, uh, John Deere has been known for supporting uh, the industry. Tell us some things, how, what, what you're doing to support the U.S. cattlemen and things you're doing today. Thank you, Marvin. For over 175 years, uh, John Deere has supplied farmers and ranchers throughout the Americas with equipment solutions. And uh, we're very proud to be a sponsor of uh, NCBA. And we've had a partnership with NCBA for over 10 years. A key part of that sponsorship is the John Deere Partner Program. So if you're a NCBA member, we uh, give you an additional discount for the purchase of any turf, uh, tractors, or uh, uh, construction uh, of products as well uh, and so also uh, we're running a show special so if they come by our booth uh, we will offer an additional discount for the show and give them a coupon 
Uh, something else that we work with NCB on is we sponsor the YCC program. We also sponsor this program, uh, Cattlemen to Cattlemen. And the John Deere Gator is the official utility vehicle of uh, NCBA. Uh, if you want more details or information on the John Deere Partner Program, please head to the John Deere booth or see your local John Deere dealer. You know, Ryan, uh, there's thousands of people at this trade show. What are some of the products that are drawing so much interest for ca uh, cattlemen tonight? The unique thing about John Deere is we have a vast line of equipment. So whether you're a, a beef a feedlot operator, cow-calf producer, or a backgrounder, we have an equipment solution for you. Some of the key products we're focusing on in our booth are six series tractors. We have a 6D and a 6M tractor, uh, 105 to 210 engine horsepower, uh, very uh, used a great deal around loader work and making hay and, um, and uh, producing high quality feed. Also, we have a 630 MoCo. So we have a whole MoCo line, but we have one MoCo here, uh, 600, 800, 900 series MoCos. We have seven different models and we have a nine series round baler. Uh, we have 13 different models of round balers. Uh, they go from four foot by four foot uh, height and diameter to five foot by six foot. So we have a round baler, a mower conditioner for all cattlemen's needs. In addition to that, we have gators in the booth, uh, the official utility vehicle of the NCBA. We also offer the feedlot producers uh, a choice as well, the 544K four-wheel drive front end loader and the e-series skid loaders so we have a broad line of equipment and we have a nice cross sampling of that for cattlemen here at the ncba trade show you know and the, what a great portfolio of products where can the cattlemen get more information about all this uh, wonder, all these wonderful products very easy question. Go to one, any of our dealers uh, in the U.S. or Canada. We have an outstanding dealer network. They will match up to your needs, the correct piece of equipment, horsepower, uh, and attachments to get that job done. Uh, also, that dealer knows uh, the discount special uh, programs that could save that customer some money. And of course, uh, we if they don't want to, can't go to a dealer, they can go to the John Deere website at www.johndeere.com and see the full line of ag, turf, and construction of forestry products that we offer. Ryan, what a great uh, what a great supporter you and your company are of NCBA. We greatly appreciate everything you do, and uh, I would encourage you folks take advantage of those uh, the partner program at NCBA. Kevin, back to you. Thanks, Mar Marvin. It really is amazing how much big farm equipment there is here on the floor to look at and learn about and literally acres of ground to cover. We'll have more from Nashville, Tennessee right after this. Don't go away. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Welcome back and thanks for joining us for this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We bring you the sights and sounds of this amazing trade show live as we come to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Now, let's turn back to Russell Nebitz out on the trade show floor. Russell, what's happening out there? 
Hey, I tell you what, Kevin, people are having tons of fun out here. You can just see it in their faces. They've got big old smiles. We've got live music in the background. And of course, we have another industry supporter with us on the program tonight. We have Dr. Doug Hilbig, a vet with Cattle and Equine Technical Services with Zoetis. And Dr. Hilbig, most of the nation has been going through some record, record cold temperatures uh, this year. But it's not too early to start thinking about spring. For those cow-calf guys, out there what do they need to be thinking about when it comes to spring work on their operations understand that that spring turnout and cav and branding time is a very busy time so the big thing that we need to remember is to have a program have a protocol in place to get our calves prepared for that time frame now what sort of vaccination program is best for comprehensive respiratory protection in our calves well, first of all, you need to work with your veterinarian, your local veterinarian, to try to set up a program that's going to include your viral vaccines, IBR, BVD, PI3, and BRSV, and then, of course, Mannheimia hemolytica, our bacterial component that causes pneumonia. Dr. Hilbig, that sounds like a pretty solid approach. Now, what vaccines can help prevent those respiratory diseases in our calves? Well, three main vaccines that we like to recommend are Enforce 3. It's an internasal product that takes care of IBR, uh, PI3, BRSV. It's the only one that has a prevention label on it. Also one shot to take care of the Mannheimia hemolytica and then a BVD, the Bovishield Gold BVD that has type 1, type 2 v BVD. So when you think about BRD, you generally think of it sometimes as a disease that feed yards and stalker operations deal with, but it's also a pretty big problem in young calves as well. Yeah, so from the age of about 21 days to weaning, that's still the major problem that we have, the major killer of our calves. So we still want to worry about our summer pneumonias and worry about Mannheimia hemolytica, which is that main component that causes that. Last question, Dr. Hilbig. How do producers out there get started on protecting their calves from respiratory disease this spring? Like I said, at least we need to start working with our local veterinarian, set a protocol up, and then work with your Zoetis uh, representative if you have any questions on any of the products we talked about. Thanks for passing along that uh, pretty sound advice for all of our cattlemen out there. Thank you. All right, Kevin, with that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you on the set. Thanks, Russell. Keep finding us those informative interviews. And now joining me is the man who will serve this year as president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, Bob McCann of Texas. Bob, thanks for coming to the show. Good to be here, Kevin. You've got a busy year ahead of you, but let's begin by talking a little bit about the history of your operation there in South Texas. Sure. Uh, well, I'm fifth generation of our family to manage our cattle operation down there, and we're in Victoria, Texas, down in South Texas, about two hours south of Houston, and we're down in what you call the coastal plains down there. and. Uh, we, uh, we operate a purebred uh, commercial Brayford uh, herd, uh, cow-calf operation, and we also uh, have a recreational hunting enterprise down there that we manage on a lot of the properties we have. And we've got uh, some family property down there, and we operate on some lease property also. And your family has a strong heritage and history, not only raising cattle, but I understand also in serving as volunteer leaders of cattle organizations. Uh, That's tell us right. a little bit about that. That's right. It, it just kind of was a, it was a natural for me because uh, my uh, great uncle and my grandfather served as president of our state affiliate Texas Southwestern Cattle Raiders Association, as I did. My father was very involved with that association as well. So I kind of grew up in that environment. So uh, it, advocacy was kind of a, kind of a big thing for our family. And, uh, so I, 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 it was a natural, natural fit for me. We appreciate your willingness to serve, Bob. And as you look ahead to the, your year as uh, NCBA president, I'd be interested. In, what are some of your priorities? Well, you know, we're probably not going to be real singular focus. We've got so many things going on, Kevin. Uh, I, th I think we're just going to try to capitalize on on the opportunities the best we can and minimize the challenges and turn some of these big challenges into, into opportunities. And uh, with, with the folks that we have involved with this association, our state affiliates and our state national partnership, if we can kind of keep everybody unified and kind of operate uh, with, with unity, you know, I don't think there's anything we can't accomplish. I've always heard you're a, you're a guy that's a, half, a glass half full kind of a guy, and we appreciate that optimism. As you take the reins this year, 
Uh, what message would you share with cattle producers all across the country? Well, you know, we've got great markets going on right now, Kevin, and we've got a lot of positive energy in the industry. And I, I would just say to everybody that uh, uh, look to NCBA if, if they need some assistance, and we can, we can craft uh, things for, the, for our producers. We can help them with their issues, with their challenges. And if we got differences, we can work those differences out. But uh, the main focus is that we can kind of get alignment with all of our folks out in the country and get alignment with, uh, with the different sectors of the beef industry. And uh, the more unified we are, the better off we're going to be and the more we're going to be able to get done and kind of move the needle for this industry. Very good. Congratulations on uh, your presidency and uh, good luck on the year ahead, Bob. Thank you, Kevin. To join Bob as a member of NCBA, the nation's largest and oldest cattle industry organization, just visit the website beefusa.org or you can call us at 1-866-USA-BEEF. Now let's head back out to this enormous trade show floor and check in with my friend Marvin Kokash. Marvin, how are you doing out there? Kevin, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, I'm just so blessed to be able to go out and talk to so many industry professionals tonight. Uh, here with me tonight, I've got Dr. Harold Newcomb from Merck Animal Health. Dr. Newcomb, glad to have you here. I understand Merck Animal Health has some new health protocols for cattlemen. Tell, can you tell me a little bit more? Sure. Uh, our health protocol program is called the Four P's. And what we're actually trying to do here is a processing program that will allow those cattle to actually perform their best. So tell me what's the first step in that protocol? Well, the first step of that program is actually to prime the immune system. And what we're trying to do here is to have a successful deworming because we know parasites do three things to animals. They impair feed intake, which for an animal to stay healthy, they have to eat. Obviously, if they're not eating, they're not going to be gaining properly. So if we have a successful deworming, then we've created more appetite so the animals eat more, they gain more. Third thing the parasite does that doesn't get very much attention is they can actually alter that animal's ability to respond to viral disease and viral vaccine. We know that if we use a product such as Safeguard, which kills the worms very quickly, we can reset that immune system in about 10 to 14 days. So once we deworm the animal, have a successful deworming, the immune responds, <clears throat> system responds in about 10 to 14 days where that animal can now respond to viral disease or, or, or viral vaccines. So uh, what, what comes next after that? Well, the other, there's two other, three other P's actually. The, the other two is to uh, prevent and to protect, okay? The prevention comes in the form of antibiotics, okay? And what we try and do is ask the producers to work with the veterinarians to develop a judicious use of metaphylactic antibiotics such as the Prevo. To protect is the vaccination of the cattle where we actually vaccinate for the respiratory diseases. So what, what's the final really uh, step? Uh, is there any additional steps that we need to take in the, in the four Ps? Well, the, the final one is the performance. And if we've done all these other things correctly, then we can see those animals perform to their, to their optimal or best genetic potential. Dr. Newcomb, thank you so much for your insight. And Kevin, we look forward to uh, sharing some more information here right with you soon. Marvin, thanks for that good work and make sure you stay hydrated out there. I know you're putting lots of miles on as you walk over those six acres. We still have a lot more ground to cover tonight and we're gonna take a short break right now, but we'll be back with much, much more from the big NCBA trade show right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Don't go away. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500, the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, Ram. Here 
chance. <laughs> Joe. Todd, how'd you do? Oh, not bad. See what you have to gain at thelongrangelook.com. You know, Nashville is always a great host city for the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and there's often big news made right here during the convention. Let's go out to Marvin Kokash on the trade show floor. Now, Marvin, I understand you have a big announcement to make tonight. Is that right? Absolutely, Kevin. It's so exciting. We're proud to announce Ram Truck is the official truck of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. What a great opportunity for the NCBA members, the industry, and really the organization. I'm here with the head of Ram Truck Marketing, David Sowers. Dave, why did Ram decide to partner with NCBA? Well, you know, since 2009, we've been trying to reach partners who share values that we share. And with the Beef Association being the leader and the voice of beef producers in this country, we're really proud to open this partnership. And we look forward to partnering with the NCBA in 2014 and beyond. What is, uh, there's so many new things going on within your organization. Tell me something new at Ram Truck that's going on 14. Well, you know, we're on a roll right now. We actually are in the midst of a 45 consecutive months of sales growth year over year, which is almost unheard of. And we're gaining market share at the same time. So even prior to the start of our new partnership with the NCBA, things are going pretty well. You know, Ram's uh, 2013 Year of the Farmer really resonated with, uh, with Cattlemen. You know, what's, what's on tap for Ram in 2014? You know, we couldn't be more proud of the last year where it, we declared it the year of the farmer. So you might say for this year, it's the year of the cattlemen. And we look forward to continuing to work with cattlemen across the country. And we also continue to work with the FFA, as you know. One of the things that I think is really exciting is about the Ram 1500. You know, it recently won the first ever back-to-back -back Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Why are some of the reasons that, uh, that you achieved this honor um, why, why time and time again critics chose uh, Ram over their competition? Well, you know, it's really delivering what the truck customers are looking for. And what's new for 14 is the new Eco Diesel in a light duty truck. It's unique in the segment and it's going to deliver 28 miles per gallon highway for a light duty truck that still has 420 pound feet of torque and can tow 9,200 pounds. So it's a real industry changer, it's a game changer, and we think it's gonna be really successful. And the guys at Motor Trend also uh, recognize the fact that we have things like four corner air suspension and Ram Box available on light duty truck as well. David, thank you so much for all of you that you're doing for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. We're so excited to have Ram Truck be the official truck of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Kevin, you need to come and check these trucks out. I absolutely will, and uh, that's great news about Ram sponsorship. I know I joined many other farmers and ranchers across the country in thanking Ram for their support of the National FFA organization and also the Year of the Farmer promotion. Let's head back out to the convention floor one more time and check in with my friend Russell Nemitz. Russell, how are you holding up out there? You know, so far so good. When you see all these smiles on these cattlemen and cattlewomen, it doesn't get any better here in Nashville. Hey, we're, we have Dr. Joe Diedrichson from Mariel with us right now. And Dr. Diedrichson, you guys have a lot going on at your booth. Talk about it. Hey, we sure do. In fact, I had to write it down to make sure I got it straight. But we're sponsoring uh, Graceland and Guitar Lounges, uh, the media room for you gentlemen, and we're also hosting a VIP reception at the media reception tomorrow, and then we're having the best of beef breakfast. Hey, when it comes to animal health for all those cattlemen and cattle women out there, I know one of your new products is Long Range. Talk about that exciting news. Oh, that is. It's got a new technology, Theraphase, which gives us 100 to 150 days activity on internal parasites in cattle. Why should this be a product of choice then? 
Yeah, well it takes to approximately 100 days on pasture to break the parasite cycle and no other product on the market lasts much over about five weeks. So when should we be using long range on our cattle? Yeah, when parasite transmission is highest and that's typically when the grass greens up and the cattle start grazing. You know, last question, Dr. Diedrichsen, before we get you back to your booth where all that excitement is going on, how do we find out more information about Long Range? We can go to our website, thelongrangelook.com. Hey, thanks for stopping by and joining us on Cattlemen to Cattlemen tonight. It's always a pleasure to be here at the NCBA. All right, Kevin, he took the words right out of my mouth. With that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Thanks, Russell. We're so proud to bring you this special coverage of the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention at NCBA Trade Show. Now remember, you still have time to come to Nashville as the NCBA Trade Show remains open until Thursday, February 6th. And with that, we close this hour of our live coverage from Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kevin Oxner. Stay with us. We'll be back again with more of NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen right here on RFD TV. We don't sit idle, wondering how we're going to build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty, with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. To ensure your seeds become strong stands, give your soil the right preparation before you plant. Improve your growing environment with agronomically designed equipment from Case IH, like the new Ecolo Tiger 875 Disc Ripper, engineered to manage tough residues and shatter root limiting compaction for improved nutrient uptake and better stands with more fully developed plants at harvest. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Learn more at CaseIH.com. Hello and welcome once again as we continue our live coverage of the NCBA Trade Show taking place right now here in Nashville, Tennessee. We've had a big crowd tonight, lots of fellowship and some fun, and we'll be with you for another hour bringing you the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention right into your living room. I'm Kevin Oxner, and along with reporters Russell Nemitz and Marvin Kokash, we have lots more in store for you in this second hour of our program tonight. Joining me now to give us an update on the important U.S. beef exports is Dan Hallstrom with the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Dan, welcome to your show and congratulations on a fantastic year. It's been a banner year for exports. Tell us about that. Well, thank you, Kevin. It certainly has. Uh, we continue to, continue to see this demand internationally grow. And uh, 2013 through 11 months uh, looks about, to be about 5.6 billion in exports, which is a record by itself. And if we add in uh, the December figures, which aren't out yet, but we'll be well in excess of $6 billion uh, beef and beef variety meat exports. And you put that on a per head basis, uh, fed cattle slaughtered, you're looking at $245 a head attributable to exports. And uh, that's an increase of about 11% from 2012 and over 20% from 2011. So yes, uh, it is a, a good story for uh, the U.S. producer. It's what I call folding money. It's real money for all of us to produce cattle and everyone in the beef chain for that matter. What are some of the key markets that have been critical to this uh, success? 
Well, I think that's the beauty of the story is it's several markets that are adding up uh, to, this, to this number. Uh, led by Japan, of course. Japan has regained its, uh, its stature as a number one export market. We're going to be uh, right at $1.4 billion in sales to Japan alone. Uh, of course, we had the increased access uh, to 30 months of age back in February, and uh, as we suspected, uh, we've taken advantage of that. Uh, but there's other, you know, the, the NAFTA markets, Canada and Mexico, number two and number three. Uh, continue to be solid. In New Mexico, it's really a success story because the first part of the year we were down and uh, we've come back with a vengeance the last three, four months of 2013. So that's good as well. But we got some smaller emerging markets uh, as well that are contributing. Um, Central South America, places like Peru, Colombia, Nicaragua, uh, by themselves are relatively small, but if you add them up, these are significant dollars. And uh, we're seeing growth down there in excess of 30%. Uh, and that's coming off of two records the last two years. So it really that's the beauty of the story is that it's not just one market. We're seeing uh, various markets around the world add to this number. And the growth prospects look, going forward look very, very good. And while that's great news, as we were talking before the show, there are a few markets that were still lacking access. Why don't you give folks some insight on that? Yes, definitely. Uh, two big markets. Uh, number one is Russia. Uh, we've been out of Russia since about a year ago at this time. Um, and, and China, direct access into China is also an issue that uh, we've been dealing with since 2003. And, and we have some smaller markets like Saudi Arabia as well that's been out since 2012. But uh, the, the good news is that China, uh, we're starting to make some progress. And uh, you know, we, we have uh, in our estimates that uh, we should see uh, opening direct at China sometime in 2014. So if you add those markets in, some, some, in, some success in those uh, markets that have access issues, uh, the future looks pretty bright going into 2014. A lot to be proud of at the Meat Export Federation. Thank you for all you do. It, better for your environment for beef trade is one area where NCBA works hard for cattlemen. To help support those efforts, why not join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and receive some valuable member benefits? Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF to join now or visit our website, that's beefusa.org. Now let's go out to the trade show floor and check in with Marvin Kokash. Marvin, what do you have for us this time? Kevin, I'm out just wandering the trade show. There's so many great exhibits, and I uh, actually came across the Novartis Animal Health booth, and I've asked Dr. Doug Scholes to join me. Dr. Scholes, what's going on over at the NCBA booth? What's new? Well, we've got a lot of things going on at the Novartis booth. Um, first of all, we've been visiting with a lot of producers, focusing primarily on reproductive performance in their cow herd. You know, certainly as we all know, these calves are worth more than, than they've ever been worth and making sure that we're getting every cow pregnant and maintaining that pregnancy is, is of utmost importance to our cow-calf producers. And then in addition to that, something kind of on the fun side, we have a roulette wheel in the booth that uh, uh, folks that are vi here visiting NCBA can stop by with a chance to win a new pair of Lucchese boots. So please well, be sure to stop on by if you're here. No doubt. Uh, so it sounds like cattlemen might be playing a little roulette themselves with uh, some of the with some commonly used vaccines that are causing some reproductive issues. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, they could be. You know, producers need to realize that they have a choice when it comes to what kind of reproductive vaccine they're going to use, and certainly they could use something. Uh, like a modified live product or they could use an inactivated product like virus shield and there's been some some recent research uh, at a number of leading universities South Dakota State Wyoming uh, Oklahoma State that has kind of called into question the, the safety of using those live viruses in pregnant females and uh, you know that could possibly lead to those animals aborting and using an inactivated product like virus shield is just a much much safer option we're not taking that safety risk, but still getting the efficacy that we expect from, from our cow vaccines. You know, in the past, um, we've been kind of told that, you know, inactivated vaccines, you know, don't work as well and, and don't provide the immune response, you know, but in a modified, uh, a modified live would tell us really how that technology has changed. Well, that's, that's probably an old notion, and if we go back 20, 25 years, it might have been true. Um, you know, our, the inactivate, first inactivated products that came out probably uh, 
weren't as effective as everyone would have liked to have been, but as that technology has developed over years, and especially with the carriers or adjuvants that we have, um, you know, the, the inactivated vaccines that we have today are just light years different from what we had in that time period, so. You know, does it still make sense for producers to, you know, be concerned about preventative vaccines with cattle prices so high? Well, certainly so. You know, um, you know these cattle are worth more than, than they've ever been worth in the in the past. And uh, you know, using vaccination is kind of like an insurance policy, so to speak. And if we can keep those animals from from getting sick with respiratory disease, or if we can keep reproductive disease at a tolerable level, it's just going to increase our production and certainly going to be more profitable. Um, for, for producers, because you know, if you've, you know, recently had to go out and use some of the the newer antibiotics that we have today that work very well, but they're very expensive, and vaccinations a, a much better return on investment, preventing those animals from getting sick than actually having to treat them. You know, there's been a lot of movement of these cattle around uh, because of the drought, and uh, has that triggered anything new that producers should be concerned about? You know, as they start to expand their cow herd. Yeah, you know, it's something to keep in the back of their mind. You know, we've have, as we've seen drought in certain areas of the country and, and other areas of the country that, that have not suffered for that. You know, myself, I live in North Carolina, you know, and I know that we've had cattle, you know, come in from, you know, as, as, as far as Nebraska just because of drought. And so, you know, even there locally, we've maybe seen some disease entities there that traditionally we thought of, well, those are Western state diseases, things like trichomonas. Um, uh, pink eye, some other diseases like that. So as these as these cattle have moved around the country, kind of looking for moisture, they've kind of brought some of those health problems with them. Well, it certainly is uh, time to really take care of those cattle, the value that they have. You know, uh, again, we're really excited to have Novartis Animal Health here in the in, at the NCBA trade show. Be sure to stop on by, play a little roulette, Kevin. Uh, we're having a great time out here. Well, thank you, Marvin. You know, for those of you just joining us, I want to reiterate, there are nearly six acres of exhibits to cover right here at the NCBA trade show. And no doubt, cattlemen and women have been eagerly anticipating this night and the opportunity it brings to look over all that's new in the beef cattle industry. We asked some of them how they felt about coming to the NCBA trade show. Well, I'm always excited to come to the NCBA trade show. Uh, the, all of the all the vendors will will uh, be here in this trade show that uh, that make our jobs much much more easy to do every day in the cattle business uh, through all of the products and services that uh, they provide us here. Certainly, the grazing lands. I'm looking forward to that booth. I'm the chairman of it, so it's a little bit prejudiced. But I'm also interested in the largest trade show we've ever had. I think that uh, that shows the interest in our industry, it shows the interest in our association, and uh, it's just a privilege to have the opportunity to visit all the people that will be at this show. We are, always learn a lot when we're here, and up our way there's not, not a lot of resources for the cattle industry because there isn't a lot of cattle in Massachusetts. So we're always excited to learn new things and find new products that'll help us better our business and improve the health and happiness of our cattle. Well, it's the opportunity to network. You'll learn a lot at this convention and in the seminars. You'll learn a lot from visiting with the exhibitors on the latest technology. Plus, you'll learn a lot in the hallways, talking to your colleagues, talking to your friends, talking to other uh, beef producers on what works and what doesn't work, and uh, also develop friendships. And at this convention each year, there's re, uh, old friendships renewed, new friendships made, and the network uh, across the U.S. of beef producers is outstanding. I want to just see a little bit of everything. There's a lot of new technology out and a lot of things to improve um, feed management, and I'm just here to take it all in. And it's good. You get to see a lot of people you don't see except when you come to these things, so it's uh, see a lot of friends that you don't see but once a year, and it's a good deal. Well, there's not a better place to meet friends, meet cattlemen from all across the country, see one of the best trade shows in the country that have uh, a lot of exciting uh, industry, new things, have uh, uh, a great show here in Nashville. It's just a, a very exciting place to be. 
You heard them, always lots of excitement at the trade show, people to meet and new products and technology to see. Now, let's go back to Russell Nemitz out on the trade show floor. Russell, what have you found for us this time? Well, we're back uh, talking about animal health with a good friend of the industry, Dr. Rick Sibyl. Of course, Dr. Sibyl is director of the U.S. Cattle Technical Services for Merck Animal Health. And uh, thank you for being on the program tonight. You're quite welcome. I, I'm glad to be here. Now, we're going to talk about Pasturella multicida and if that'll cause pneumonia in beef calves. And I'm sure that I said that. I've only been practicing that word for about a half hour now. Yeah, it's uh, Pasturella multicida. But at the end of the day, it's an organism like Manheimia hemolytica that causes uh, BRD or pneumonia in calves. So at the end of the day, you have to sort of look for both of the organisms because both of the organisms are causing pneumonia in our cattle population. Now, given the current diagnostic information, how prevalent is it in diseased lung tissue? We have lots of data from multiple diagnostic universities, Kansas State, South Dakota State, Nebraska, University of Texas at A&M, and they will tell you that in beef cattle, and it's a little bit different in dairy cattle, but in beef cattle, it's between 20 and 40 percent of the pneumonia cases are caused by Pasturella multicida. You know, Dr. Sybil, with that said, how prevalent is it prior to uh, BRD treatment? Well, the organisms of BRD are unique. They are commensals, which means that in healthy cattle, they carry the organisms and the organisms are not sort of detrimental or pathogenic. And then when the calf gets sort of ill, which is from stress or many other things, those organisms sort of become pathogenic. And so both Pasturella and Manheimia cause a big issue with pneumonia. They get turned on by the calf's immune system when it becomes a very stressed. So it is something that uh, producers should be on the lookout. What attributes should producers look for then in a vaccine? Well, vaccines have to prevent the organism from turning sort of detrimental or pathogenic. So at the end of the day, a vaccine ought to protect with the least amount of stress possible, and it ought to be used in calves that have the opportunity to respond to the vaccine. So the vaccine needs to protect the animal as it relates to those organisms that are sort of hanging out inside. So for everybody who's watching at home tonight on RFD TV, what does Merck Animal Health have in their portfolio to help protect against BRD? Well, we have a couple of different vaccines. We're one of the few companies that have a bivalent bacterial pneumonia vaccine for both Pasturella multicida and Manheimia hemolytica. So now we are going to introduce the first ever intranasal bacterial vaccine. Historically, the vaccines have been toxoid or toxoid type products. Ours was the exception that were given sub-Q in the neck. Now, for the first time ever, we will have an intranasally applied Pasturella and Manheimia vaccine called once PMHIN. Pasturella multicida. You got it right. Yay! I got it right. Dr. Rick Sibyl with Merck Animal Health. Thanks for having a little bit of fun with me tonight. You're perfect. That's very much my pleasure. <laughs> All right, Kevin, with that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. And thanks so much, Dr. Russell Nevis. <laughs> Lots of good animal health information available right here at the NCBA Trade Show. And we have much more ahead, including a visit with the Peterson Brothers. Stay with us. We'll be back with more live from Nashville right after this. If you're looking for high quality Simmental or Red Angus cattle, then you should meet the folks at the Beekler Ranch in Linton, North Dakota. Their annual female sale is the second Saturday in November and their annual bull sale is the second Thursday in February. They strive for quality over quantity, delivering bulls and females that are fully developed and performance tested. We like to have an easy fleshing animal that has a lot of depth of body. Uh, a lot of natural thickness, a lot of natural muscling. We like our cattle to have a balanced set of EPDs. Beekler Simmental is where you'll find Simmental and Red Angus genetics that pay. And with the right disposition, quality carcass traits, and more, Beekler bulls and females will work for you. We like to stand behind our cattle, and, and we're pretty proud of what we produce. To view the sale catalog and videos of the bulls and females offered, just visit the website johnsonbeeklersimmentals.com or on sale day, view and bid at dbauction.com.
Welcome back to Nashville and the NCBA Trade Show. Joining me now are two brothers that you may know from the YouTube videos. Welcome to both of you, the Peterson brothers from Kansas, or a couple of the Peterson brothers from Kansas, I should say, right? Yes, yeah, two out of three of us are here. Very good. Yeah. Well, well, introduce yourself and tell folks, of course, the first video that I was familiar with is I'm Farming and I Grow It that went viral and made you guys very, very famous. Uh, introduce yourself and tell folks a little bit about how you got started making these parody videos. Yeah, well, uh, my name is Greg Peterson. And I'm Nathan Peterson. And uh, we got started making these videos. It was about uh, almost two years ago now, at the end of my junior year of college at K-State. Um, I had this idea to make a, a farming music video with, with my brothers. And uh, that idea turned into a parody music video. Um, when I'd, I'd heard the song, Sexy and I Know It, when I was hanging out with my friends, and I changed the words, and they thought it was funny. So I kind of took it and ran with it. And uh, just started off as a really simple, small idea. And, and it turned into something so much bigger and uh, just took it home to them and, and convinced them to film with me. And, <laughs> and uh, it did take a little convincing. They weren't too gung-ho <laughs> right away. But. Now, Nathan, do you have an agent now to, 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 to get you some, some, some better pay for, for, for uh, making these exactly. videos? Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> You'll work on that. I just gotta that. work on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be your agent. Okay. Let's talk about uh, what's next. Obviously, you didn't stop with that video. It went viral. You became instantly famous, uh, got a lot of publicity on, on you know, virtual media as well as other media. Your latest video is Chore, right? And that's only been out four, five, six weeks. Mm -hmm. It's focused on cattle. And uh, why did you decide to, to, to do one focused solely on cattle? Oh, uh, well, part of it is we've done the more broad range of parodies. So we wanted to start focusing on different things we do. And one of the main things we do every day is chore. You know, in the morning and the evening, we got to feed uh, the cattle and, and do all the duties that goes along with that. And so I actually, I heard the song Roar, and I'm like, well, hey, Roar could be changed to Chore. That's easy enough. And then Greg did all the other lyrics, but I came up with that part. And um, so we just thought we'd focus on the feeding cattle part and um, really, really get that and point out to people that we do that every morning and every night. Uh, we got to feed those cattle. So. I love the video. It's so real. You guys are in your work clothes. You're doing things that all of us can relate to. And, and, and I'm interested to know how you're responding to your role as global advocates. As I look today, you had what 750,000 likes on this video and what 26 million hits 20, yeah. total. Yeah, 26 million hits total. How do you respond to that uh, that role as a global agricultural ag advocate? Um, well, it's it's definitely taken some adjusting to. I mean, you know, if you think back to a year and a half ago, it's kind of like back then it was just completely overwhelmed. We didn't know what to do and. And as we've kind of moved through the process, I, I think we're kind of, kind of realizing our place in, in the industry and, and what, what's needed to be done. You know, we, we understand the issues in agriculture and we understand the, the disconnect between the, the consumer and the producer. And so we're trying to help bridge that gap and we're also trying to help, you know, um, you know uh, lessen the mis misconceptions about agriculture that people have. And so, um, our, you know, we're just trying to do our best to provide someone with with uh, real family farmers, uh, you know, just working, working hard out in central Kansas and, and just trying to, trying to show people what it's like out on the farm. Well, thanks for everything you've done. You really, really are great examples to all of us in agriculture. We appreciate it and keep up the good work. Thanks. Telling, uh, I'm sorry, the NCBA trade show changes each and every year. New exhibitors, new things to see and do. This year, there's an expanded retail area for all that cowboy and cowgirl girl, uh, gear, I should say, you might want to shop for. Let's take a look at what's in store for you if you come to this NCBA convention. Well, to be honest with you, this is my first time down here to this show, and I was really impressed with the size of the show and the scope of the educational opportunities for producers and, and just for Roper and Stetson to be a part of, of the whole thing is, uh, is exciting. Uh, Roper and Stetson Apparel, if you join in NCBA, uh, you get 50% off when you join and you get a voucher for 50% off. So that, that helps to generate membership for the organization. Also, it's an ongoing relationship because quarterly they receive, as a member of the NCBA, you receive a 25% discount coupons. 
And so it, it helps to get Roper and Stetson's product out in front of the consumer and helps everybody you know, save a little money. Uh, Roper's excited to be here at the NCBA because it connects Roper with the end user of their product. Uh, the Western lifestyle is what Roper dresses everyone for. And the added benefit of being able to partner with NCBA and give the members that show up here to this convention half off is, uh, is really added a added benefit. All in all, this is a record-setting NCBA trade show with 300 exhibitors and nearly six acres all under one roof here at the Opperland Hotel and all dedicated to the products of interest to beef cattle producers. Now, let's go back live to reporter Russell Nemitz. Dr. Nemitz, what do you have for us this time? <laughs> oh, we have another industry supporter from our friends at Merck Animal Health. I like the sound of doctor. Does that mean a pay raise? <laughs> Anyways, we have Dr. Kevin Hill with us, and I understand you find folks at Merck Animal Health have a brand new vaccine that you want to let folks at home know about. Tell, talk about that for us tonight. Yeah, the name of it is Once PMHIN. It's a brand new intranasal vaccine that is specifically designed to prevent the bacterial causes of uh, respiratory disease in, in young calves. Now, why would producers be interested in an intranasal pasteurella type vaccine that you're talking about tonight? The intranasal route gives vaccines a, a certain characteristic that we don't get in any other way, and that is that they produce local immunity. And so we are able to produce antibodies right at the site of infection where these bacteria are going to invade versus when we give an injection, then it stimulates antibodies in the bloodstream. So that mu mucosal immunity, we call it, is the key feature of uh, what an intranasal vaccine will do. That's a great explanation. Are there any other unique features that uh, we should know about? A couple of them. Uh, one is intranasal also means lower stress. Pasteurella vaccines traditionally can be a little hard on calves, especially these young calves. And so by going intranasally, we get much less stress than we do by injecting. The other big deal is it's proven effective in calves as young as one week of age. And that's truly unique. There are just not any other vaccines out there that have been proven in that young a calf. Well, that's what I was going to ask you when we talk about this new vaccine. Will that younger indication uh, for those animals be a, a benefit to those producers out there? I think it really will. You, we have a lot of issues still uh, in, our, in our beef producers uh, with summer pneumonias, kind of the respiratory disease problems while that calf is still maturing, you know, before he reaches four or five months of age. So well, we think it'll be a, a feel a, a real need out there in the cow-calf market. And before we let you go and get on with the rest of your business uh, this evening, uh, can you summarize one more time why a producer should uh, choose this brand new vaccine from you folks? Well, in a nutshell, because it's truly unique. It's the only intranasal pasteurella vaccine on the market, the only one approved for use in calves as young as a week of age. Uh, it protects against both of the two uh, leading causes of bacterial uh, pneumonia. And so, uh, and that low stress feature, those are the things that are really key about this. One more time, what's the name of the new vaccine? Once PMHIN for intranasal. And uh, one quick favor. You bet. Can you take me with you tonight, whatever you have going on, because our last interview of the night is with your own Dr. Eric Moore, and frankly, I'm scared. Absolutely. I Anybody who has to deal with Dr. Moore should have a little extra protection. I'd be glad to work with you. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let you go. Thank you for being on Cattlemen to Cattlemen tonight. Kevin, with that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Well, thank you so much, Russell. Great information. Now joining us to talk about the Beef Quality Assurance Program is Dave Korbelik with Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Incorporated. Dave, we're glad to have you back on the show and appreciate your sponsorship. Uh, you've been partnering on this Beef Quality Assurance Program, the checkoff funded Beef Quality Assurance Program uh, for some time now. Tell folks uh, what you have in store this year. Well, thanks, Kevin. It's really good to be back with you again. Uh, as you know, last year we had a great, uh, really great success with the uh, BQA sponsored program. Uh, we partnered last year by giving a free window of uh, opportunity for folks to go online and get educated and certified in BQA 
had over 3,500 people in about a month do that, so it was really good success. And we've agreed with the NCBA and the BQA program to do that again this year. So from February 3rd uh, to April 15th of this year, folks can go online and, and learn all about BQA. That's great. Now, how specifically does a certification work? Well, the easiest way to find out about it is, frankly, to go to BIVI-BQA.com. And it's very simple. Uh, a lot of folks aren't aware that they can uh, learn about all the things that BQA has to offer. It's very customized to folks, in, whether it's a cow-calf rancher, a uh, stalker operator, feedlot, a dairy, folks that transport cattle. Um, there's modules customized right for them. They can learn all about it right there on uh, BIVI-BQA.com. Now, I know your organization is really passionate about this issue. Why is it the Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica is, is, is so passionate about the Beef Quality Assurance Program? Well, it's, you know, it's a, a program with a lot of track record and a, and a great, um, uh, great goal. It's all about doing the right thing for cattle, um, which is ultimately, if we do the right thing for cattle, it's the right thing for the producer, it's the right thing for the consumer of the products. So we just see it as really the, uh, a good fit for us. And our, our focus is around our, uh, our motto, Prevention Works, mm. which really lines up with BQA uh, seamlessly around intervening early and often within the animal's life. Now, the NCBA trade show continues for another couple of days. What would you tell folks sitting at home who are considering making the trek to Nashville, why they should come? And secondly, why should they uh, visit the Baron Gringelheim booth? Well, we'd love them to stop by. We had a I caught you sipping out of that cup earlier <laughs> from was. the opening general session. We had a great turnout um, this afternoon at the opening general great session. Great session, by the way. Thank you. And uh, that was sponsored by our product, Pyramid 5 pre -sp uh, Plus Pre-Spons. Uh, but if they'd come by and visit our booth uh, on tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 4, I saw the Peterson Farm Brothers were on here earlier. Yes. They're our guests here this week. They were there, performed at the opening general session. They'll be in our booth tomorrow to sign, sign autograph posters, take pictures. be a great time to meet those young men. I think my daughters may jump on an airplane and come out. They're, they're <laughs> big admirers of the Peterson Brothers. You bet, you bet. Thanks for coming to the show, Dave. Hey, thank you, Kevin. Always enjoy it. Find out more about the Beef Quality Assurance Program by visiting our website. That's cattleman to cattleman org. And now, let's check back in with Marvin Kokash out on the trade show floor. Marvin, where does the evening find you now? Kevin, I've had a chance to continue to go around the wonderful trade show we have. What a great experience. Folks, get on down here to the Gaylord Opryland Hotel and take advantage of this for the next couple of days. I came across one of my very good friends and a great supporter of NCBA, Jason Becker from Caterpillar. Jason, we know that uh, Caterpillar has been a supporter of NCBA. You know, tell us uh, really what you, uh, why you support NCBA. Well, the NCBA, we look forward to this show every year. And the NCBA is uh, an organization that is in existence to serve the cattlemen and cattle women that, that we really care about. So our, our biggest thing is about partnering with uh, our producers, our feed yards, our cow-calf guys, and the NCBA is the way to do that. There's a lot of exciting things going on in Caterpillar and this year at the show. What, what are some of the things you got going on here? Well, you know, in, in, in the beef industry, what we, what we focus our efforts on are skid steers and wheel loaders and then some ag tractors as well. Uh, so we got a brand new K-series wheel loader, 20-some uh, percent reduction in fuel consumption, and the new D-series skid steer, which a lot of our cattlemen are using, uh, and lots of great new features on those products. So those are, those are the two product things. And then uh, we always support the youth, uh, the cattlemen and, and the youth uh, producers council. And uh, so we brought Luke Snyder, the man, professional bull rider, to come and talk to the Young Producers Council this year. Luke, um, you know, I was noticing that, Jason, I thought maybe you were Jason's bodyguard, but uh, it looks like you're more just a bull rider. So tell us uh, really what you've got going on. Yeah, like Jason said, I'm just excited to be out here. Uh, we're going to talk to some uh, young men and women, and I'm going to share some experience of uh, my life as a professional bull rider inside and out of the arena and uh, just try to relate to them and help them. You know, they're young just like me and in a transitional period, so just sharing some of my stories. You know, I'm just uh, really excited. That, you know, bull riding is a tough old sport, and uh, to see you still upright and uh, taking in oxygen is a big thing. So we, uh, we appreciate all, Jason, all that you and Caterpillar do for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Be sure to come on down to this trade show. Folks, we have got uh, so many exciting things for people to see and check out. We're open uh, Wednesday and Thursday down here at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel. You can still register, get your trade show pass online at beefusa.org. And uh, you can go ahead and get registered and, 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 come, on, and come on down here. 
uh, come on down here and really take advantage of what's here. So Kevin, back to you at the set. Thank you more, Marvin. In fact, as you mentioned, it's not too late for any of you to join us. One day registrations are available, so just come on to Nashville and take in the big trade show, which will be open all day, as Marvin said, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Find out more at beefusa.org. We'll be back with more live from Nashville right after this. Stay with me. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Hello, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Music City and our live coverage of the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. We have 300 exhibitors and nearly six acres of cattle-related equipment and products all under one roof. So it's a record-setting trade show this year, and let's go back to Russell Nemitz out on the trade show floor to learn just a little bit more about some of those products and technologies. Russell? Hey, thank you, Kevin, and uh, for a lot of the program, we've been talking to animal health people about new products and services uh, available here in 2014, but we're going to switch gears just a little bit and talk about what is available equipment-wise. We have our good friend, Mark Hooper, Director of Marketing with New Holland North America with us. And anybody that has uh, traveled the convention floor here in Nashville, Mark, understands New Holland has a huge presence here in Nashville. What can cattlemen and cattlewomen expect from New Holland during this year's trade show? Well, you're, you're exactly right. We're so excited to be here and be part of the NCBA, NCBA convention this year and uh, we've got over 35 pieces of equipment and tractors scattered around the convention center outside and inside and, and we're excited to show that off. We've also brought a lot of our product experts that know how to make good quality hay and that's what producers I think are looking for today. How do we bale better hay, better feed? Um, and then in addition to that this year we're doing something a little different. We brought in 10 of our top dealers that are in a lot of these cattle markets to engage in a whole new way in, in this convention and to just solidify our partnership with NCBA. Well, that's pretty cool. You kind of touched on it. Uh, we all want to produce higher and better quality hay for our animals. Uh, how can New Holland help us do exactly that? Well, New Holland, if, if you think about it, New Holland bales more hay every day than anyone else globally. And we do that certainly with our great products. But we also have a lot of, of expertise in, in hay making. And we put out a number of, of uh, resources uh, to help producers understand that and, and get the most out of their hay making. We have a, a haymaker's handbook that we like to promote as is really the Bible on hay. And it's, it really, from a scientific perspective, um, uh, gives a, a producer that extra edge in developing his hay uh, and his feed quality. Uh, we also, dealers are a great resource as well to get uh, to really understand and there are the experts locally when it deals with equipment and how to, uh, how to bale hay as well. So that's just a few things that we're providing to, to cattle producers here at the convention. What else can we expect here in 2014 as far as uh, equipment wise? Are you guys uh, rolling out any new pieces that we should get excited about? I tell you what, this year, 2014, is one of the most significant years for us in terms of new product uh, introductions, particularly in this cattle segment. Uh, we have a new 560 round baler 
uh, makes a five by six bale, dry hay configurations, perfect for, for cattlemen. A um, lot of new features, 20% more capacity. So that's something that cattle producers can be looking for. We also have a new self-propelled wind rower, our speed, speed rower series, uh, that uh, a lot of new features and benefits from just a speed and maneuverability standpoint comes equipped with uh, global positioning and guidance so that you can maximize your efficiency in the field and, and cut that hay uh, cleanly through the field. And then in addition to that, we've got a whole new series of disc binds, uh, our award-winning disc binds with the Momax 2 cutter bar system, uh, wide conditioning to, to cleanly cut and spread that crop evenly across the field to get the maximum dry down makes a, a better quality hay. So lots of new products that we're launching this year that are specifically for these cattle producers. Hey, that sounds pretty darn good for the U.S. beef cattle industry. Mark, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, Kevin, as he said, there's a lot of excitement down here and there's a lot of excitement at the New Holland booth. With that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Well, thanks, Russell, and thanks to my good friend Mark Hooper. We appreciate he and his team at New Holland. Now, to cowboy up with your fellow cattlemen and women as members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, please give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF to join now, or you can visit our website at beefusa.org. Now, let's go back to Marvin Kokash. Marvin, who do you have with you now? You know, Kevin, I've had the opportunity to see some equipment Talk to some world-class animal health manufacturers. Uh, just so many great things. And one of our great friends of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association are the folks at Greeley Hatworks. And I have Trent Johnson with me. Trent is the owner of Greeley Hatworks. Trent, uh, tell us about the show tonight. Well, man, watching the crowd walk in that front door, it was like a herd of cattle, and it was a very positive herd of cattle. Um, the, the energy was great, and we were shaping a lot of hats, seeing customers we've been seeing here for over 15 years now. And, you know, one thing that's kind of changed is the brim widths have gotten a little bit wider, not necessarily as ugly as my hat, but a little bit wider from your traditional cattleman. So our conservative cattleman brim has gotten about a quarter of an inch wider here over the last few years, and it's just been great seeing everybody, and you guys always do such a great job. So thanks for having us back again this year. You know, Trent, one thing that you do every year for us is make the president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association at. That's very special. Tell us, uh, you know, if, are there any new trends that maybe you see in the hat business? Uh, you're in this every day. I'd be kind of interested in that. Um, well, you know, from uh, for speaking about the president's hat, you know, his has always been some, somewhat a little bit more conservative, but I've even seen the president's here go with a little bit wider brim and a little bit edgier, maybe a little bit straighter up on the sides. So that's a trend that's coming from the rodeo world and even the AQHA world, which I know your partners with American Quarter Horse here. And a lot of those trends, the sides have been coming up higher and tighter, and that starts to roll over into the everyday ranch work hat. You know, and I would just encourage everybody, if you need a quality cowboy hat, just go and, and visit Trent here at the trade show. And also, uh, you know, visit his website, GreeleyHatWorks.com. I believe that's right. That's right. And uh, he is a great partner of NCBAs and, and really always willing to help support the association. Kevin, back to you at the set. Thanks, Marvin. You know, I've got two of those Greeley hat works hat myself, and there's no better hatter in America than Trent Johnson. As he always says, uh, life has enough headaches. Don't let your hat be one of them. Well, it's always so good to see so many of our friends and neighbors gathered together one place for the cattle industry convention. Now, let's check back in with Russell Nemitz. Okay. Russell, what's happening in your corner of the trade show? Well, we're actually down here right in the midst of the NCBA's trade show booth. And let me tell you what, there is a lot going on down here for cattlemen and cattlewomen. Uh, if they get the chance, swing on by and pick up some wonderful NCBA apparel and other goodies. But speaking of goodies, we have Dr. Eric Moore, technical services manager, veterinarian, team beef for Merck Animal Health. And Dr. Moore, we're going to talk about controlling BRD in the industry today. Where are we at with that? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great quest, Crest and Russell. And this is like the, what, third, fourth year we've done this commercial here, and, or done this commercial, done this interview. And we have not moved the needle a lot on BRD in the last few years. We know we've had some challenging times with drought, rising feed costs, people trying to work different angles to get nutrition in these cattle. And all we know is, is that BRD is still a big issue in our industry. When we look at what we can do for it, 
we at Merck Animal Health, and you've, you've talked to Dr. Hill, you've talked to Dr. Sybil, you've talked to Dr. Newcomb, we've had a lot of issues on how we handle and prevent BRD. And we, we have been working as a company for the last, as long as we've been a company, which in this industry has been kind of tough because we've been merging all the time. We've been numerous companies in the last few years, and now from Intervet to Shearing Plow to Intervet to Shearing Plow, and now to Merck Animal Health, that we have a, a complete line that we work with to build up and fight BRD in the industry. It's a continued problem, drought, rising feed costs, commingling, working with, working with the systems we have, we haven't conquered it, so it's, it's a continued problem that we're dealing with. Well, Dr. Moore, what type of solutions can you offer cattlemen and cattle women tonight on reducing the effects of BRD in a cattle operation? Well, we've, you've heard them talk about prime vac, You've heard them talk about the four P's. You've heard them talk about deworming. All those processes we go through to try and reduce the effects of BRD as we deal with cattle going through our system. We, we, we strive to eliminate it at the front side. And, and when we do that, it's the vaccinations, prepping the immune system, all those things that we do. We know we can't always eliminate BRD from, from our cattle. So when we do have a problem, one big thing we have to do is look at the most effective, most economical, and most powerful products we have to treat BRD. And when we look at BRD in cattle, and we look at our portfolio that we have, and we have two great, we have the tried and true New 4 Res 4 Gold, New 4 Gold. Those are the products that have been on the market. They've shown the benefits of treating BRD, saving cattle, saving lungs as we go through and, and, and protect that production system. Res4 Gold is the only product out there, well, it's not the only, it's the only product out there that has both a non-steroidal and a, and a premium antibiotic. So we have a product that fights the inflammation in the lungs as well as the, the infection in the lungs. So we look at Res4 Gold as a treatment. Our newest addition to the, to the product line is Zuprevo, which is a long-acting, long uh, fast-acting, potent, convenient to use. It's a product we made for the U.S. market. It's one mil per hundred pounds, so it fits. You know, even you can calculate one mil per hundred pounds, Russell, right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's easy to, if you can get close on the weight, you know it's going to be one mil per hundred pounds fast-acting, long-lasting, most powerful handbook out there to use to treat and for both control and treatment of BRD. Thanks for throwing me underneath the bus. I guess I deserved it. Well, you did that earlier to me. That's <laughs> what I heard. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us on Cattleman to Cattleman tonight, Dr. Moore. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Kevin. I better send it back to you before he takes one more shot at me. <laughs> well, thanks, Russell. I think you're getting your master's in both science and math tonight. We'll be back with more Cattleman to Cattleman live from Nashville right after this. Don't go away. Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4 through 7. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. to Nashville, the beautiful Gaylord Opryland Hotel, and the 2014 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Hey, Marvin, let's see who you have to visit with now. Kevin, there's so many wonderful people here and so many uh, folks that you can really learn from at this, uh, at this convention. And one of them is actually uh, the lead of our science and product group, uh, Dr. Mandy Carr Johnson with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Dr. Carr, tell me what's going on uh, with you here at this convention, some of the things that you're gonna be talking to the folks about. 
Well, it's a great opportunity for the members of our team, as well as myself, to have time to talk to producers about the programs in which they help advise on the checkoff. So we'll be talking to the value committee, the convenience, the one for taste, uh, nutrition and health and the safety committee as well as the one for freedom to operate about the current checkout programs that we have in place and give them updates and then look into the future for the next year's plan. You know, building beef demand and protecting our, our beef supply is so important and everything that you do in the, in the science realm is important. Um, is there anything, you know, real specific issues that maybe you guys are really going to focus in on at this meeting? Well, one of the things we always look to is we want to build demand for beef, but one of the other things we have to do is protect the demand that we currently have. So in some of our committees, like in the safety committee or in freedom to operate, we really talk about protecting the demand that we have where consumers want to buy our product. There are other committees where we really work on building demand, such as making convenient products, new recipes, um, new cuts that consumers can utilize to make a meal um, on a weekday, or great new ideas with ground beef. So we have a lot of great uh, content concepts that we talk to producers about and then we continue working on those through the end of this year and then we look forward to our new opportunities that will start next year. You know that's uh, another re reason that folks need to come on down here to this convention just uh, there's so many great uh, committees and information They're really our, our committees are open to the folks that attend this convention come in and pay a registration fee and be a part of the process here we, we've got so so many things going on here and another thing that's for all you social media types uh, you need to follow us on Twitter at beef USA um, there's you'll be able to really keep up we've got so many things going on with social media and also like us that on Facebook so then like the National Cattlemen's Beef Association so uh, you can really keep up on moment by moment what's going on at this great conference here at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel Dr. Carr, thank you so much for your time, and Kevin, back to you. Well, thanks, Marvin. Now, the way I've got it figured, you and Russell have only covered about an acre and a half of the six acres we have to cover this afternoon and evening. Russell, where are you now? Well, I'm still hanging out in the NCBA's trade show booth on this uh, six and a half some acres of convention uh, floor plan. and. We have time for one more quick interview, I believe, out here. We have Mike Miller, Senior Vice President for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And you know what, Mike, whether you're young or old, it seems there's a, a shift towards more people accepting digital media, social media. Marvin was touching on it before he tossed it over to us. But uh, let's talk about that and how that kind of ties in with uh, where the industry is headed today. Certainly. Well, we've made some really big changes over the last several months, and we've moved a lot of our platform to digital. Um, we're, we're excited about trying to get the next generation excited about beef and purchasing more beef, and we really feel like we've got to be where they are, which is mobile, which is digital, and so we've moved a lot of our platform over to digital. We're really excited about what we're going to be able to demonstrate to the industry over the next several years with that move. So if we want to learn a little bit more about this new exciting digital advertising and all the digital media that that's available in today's beef cattle industry, how do we do so? Well, I think, first of all, you can visit any of our websites, www.beefitswhatsfordinner.com is one of the places to go look. You're going to be able to see a lot of that demonstrated there. Um, and then, frankly, we're going to be able to show a lot of that to our folks that are here in Nashville this week. So we're excited about all that we're going to be able to show them. We're excited about where we're headed, and I think it's going to be really good for beef over the next several years. Hey, thanks for stopping by and giving us this quick update. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Kevin, the NCBA Senior Vice President, Mike Miller. With that, I'll go ahead and send it back to you on the set. Thanks, Russell and Mike. Now, don't forget, there's still time to come to Nashville. There are two more big days of action right here at the NCBA Trade Show. And it's not too early to put the 2015 convention on your calendar. We'll be in sizzling San Antonio, Texas, for the 2015 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show for another outstanding gathering. Now, it'll take place February 4th through the 7th, 2015 in beautiful San Antonio. Find out more at the website beefusa.org. And, and now uh, let's go back uh, to our, our crack reporting team, uh, my good friends Marvin Kokash and Russell Nemitz. Guys, Great job this evening. What were some of the highlights for the two of you? After he calls us crack reporters, yeah. he, he then compliments us. Only a guy from Colorado would do that, you yeah, know? I, I'm from Colorado. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, what's he picking on me for then? Well, I don't understand. Kevin, it's been a great show. We've met so many great people. 
we love bringing the trade show to the folks at home and we really really want folks to come on down and enjoy all the things that we've got to see tonight russell i don't know about what some of your favorite things are but I got to see this really killer sand castle that's being built right now, and it's amazing. And then I also put my uh, entry into draw uh, for a drawing into one of these uh, John Deere, new John Deere Gators. So yeah, leave it to you to be playing in a sandbox. And thank you for scooting away. I was getting a little nervous. Uh, you were getting way too close. Anyways, we've had a lot of fun out here on the NCBA uh, trade show floor, Kevin. Uh, we can't wait to do it again next year in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. With that, for Marvin Kokash, I'm Russell Nimitz, and we'll send it back to you. Well, thanks so much, guys. You've been a great team to work with. I'm Kevin Oxner, and we'll see you again next week right here on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Good night.